Kumbaya, my Lord, Kumbaya. O oh Lord, Kumbaya. Someone's singing, Lord, Kumbaya. O oh Lord, Kumbaya. Praying, Lord, come by our. O oh Lord, come by our. Come by our means, come by here. It's an American African spiritual. Its origin is not completely known, but it was known to be sung in the Gullah culture. In the islands off South Carolina and Georgia, with connections to enslaved West Africans. But it's a song which we now know pretty well. And in this song we're asking God to come close to us when we're singing, praying, crying or dying. So welcome to today's Thought for the Day on Tuesday 31st of March, the end of a month which has been unusual in the history of this country and of this world. Let's then turn to God in prayer. God of life and death, God of the present, past and future, God of the highs and lows of our experience, we invite you to come close to us today, to make us strong when we are weak, to bring us healing when we are unwell, to help us think when we are confused and to navigate through the coming hours of this day with faith, hope and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Bible reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 20. The Apostle Paul writes about uni unity and diversity in the body of Christ. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptised by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one Spirit to drink. And so the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I don't belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, Because I am not an eye, I don't belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body every one of them, just as he wanted them. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The church in Corinth in southern Greece was quite an exciting place to be. Corinth was a bit of a wild city, and the Apostle Paul had planted a Christian church in the middle of it. It was very vibrant but it wasn't united. So Paul wrote to the church more than once, stressing the need for it to be together, to be united. And in chapter 12, as we've heard, he uses the metaphor of the human body to illustrate the nature of unity. 
Our bodies are composed of many different organs, but we are one body. There are many parts, but one body. Unity, not uniformity. We're all different people. We do different things, but for the benefit of others in a collective sense. At this time of coronavirus, people are doing different things, but with a single aim of protecting others to the greatest extent possible. Today, 31st of March, 389 years ago, in 1631, John Dunn died. You might be familiar with an expression or two that John Dunn is famous for. For whom the bell tolls, no man is an island. That might ring a bell. <laughs> Excuse the pun. John Dunn was a very interesting character. He was primarily a poet, and he blazed a trail in writing a certain style of poetry, which has been described as metaphysical, a term used about him rather than by him. Some of his earlier love poetry you probably wouldn't read out in church, but he was very involved in church. He grew up as a Roman Catholic, but became an ordained Anglican at the request of the King, and served as Dean of St Paul's Cathedral in London for ten years. By the way, this wasn't the St Paul's Cathedral we know today, built by Christopher Wren with its dome and unique architecture. Don was Dean of the previous cathedral, the medieval building on the same site which was burned down in the Fire of London in 1666. Dunn experienced a number of close deaths. Three of his children died before they were ten. His wife Anne died. His daughter Lucy then died, aged eighteen. In late November and early December 1623, he almost died himself of a near-fatal illness. During his convalescence, John Dunn wrote a series of meditations and prayers on health and pain and sickness that were published as a book in 1624, under the title of Devotions Upon Emergent Occasions. One of these meditations, Meditation 17, is the one that contains those well-known phrases, No man is an island, and for whom the bell tolls. What does he mean by this? Dunn meant that we're all connected. There's that word again. Connectedness. Solidarity. No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a piece of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less. Any man's death diminishes me because I'm involved in mankind, and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. He didn't use inclusive language, but that's what he meant. If anyone dies for whom the bell tolls, we're all affected, we're all diminished. We're all in this thing called life and death together. United we stand. Abide with me, fast falls the eventide. The darkness deepens, Lord with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, Help of the helpless, O oh, abide with me.
fear no foe with thee at hand to bless. Ills have no weight, and tears no bitterness. Where is death's sting? Where grave thy victory? I triumph still if thou abide with me. A hymn written by Henry Francis Light, following the death of a friend. John Dunn strongly believed in the importance of relationships and physical contact. Many of his poems make that abundantly clear. It is that physical contact and meeting others that we are missing at this particular time. We will be able to resume this when the time is right, but for the moment it's a price we need to pay to enable the community to benefit in terms of corporate health and well-being. Help us, Lord, to embrace life, to trust you, and not to fear death. Help us, Lord, to play our particular part, either passively or actively, to protect and to bless other people whom we cannot spend physical time with right now. We pray for them, for their health and well-being today. We pray for the 9,000 people with coronavirus being treated in our hospitals and for the capacity needed to cope with more. We pray for Harefield Hospital locally, that the respiratory expertise that they are able to offer may save lives effectively. We pray for all who are inside their homes most of the time many of us, for encouragement and for the ability to live each day as it comes. May we be encouraged too, by glimmers of hope amidst great concerns on the global scene. May the UK emerge better than expected from this dark and difficult time. O oh God the Protector, of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I, who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart.
by the Lord of wind and flame. I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them. My hand will save. Finest bread I will provide, till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. This modern Christian hymn is inspired by the call of the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6 and the call of young Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 3. Our calling at the moment may be more to stay than to go. It's sometimes more difficult to stay. It might not be quite so exciting. But if God is where we are, we don't have to go anywhere to find him. Lord, come to us today, right where we are, that we may know that we're in your presence. You are welcome in our lives, our hearts and our homes. Please stir our spirits, abide with us, and make us conscious of a much greater community connected by faith, hope and love. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us today and always. Amen.